Y'all gotta find that scientist. This is some of the dumbest thing ever. Scientist has revived a 48,000 year old zombie virus buried in ice. I mean, may the Lord have mercy. Let's we check it out. We have all witnessed the horrors of what one virus can do. Yeah. The coronavirus brought the entire world to a grinding halt and it took massive containment measures on a global scale. Vaccines were developed rapidly to halt the spread of the virus. That was just one virus. At its peak also, its fatality rate was not more than 4%. And now, what would happen if the world comes face to face with an even deadlier strain of an unknown virus? Well, there could be many such viruses hidden deep within the permafrost. I just don't understand why would you revive something that don't need reviving? This literally sounds like uh, like the opening credits of the end, like a zombies movie or something. I don't know, man. The permafrost is a permanently frozen layer or one on or under the Earth's surface. It consists of soil, gravel and sand, usually bound together by ice. And now a warming planet is causing the glaciers to melt. What I mean to say is that our protective white layer is melting more rapidly than we can imagine. Earlier, our main concern was the amount of greenhouse gases being released from the frost melting away. But now we have a different concern altogether. It is the release of dangerous ancient microbes buried deep under the permanent frozen zone. And this is according to researchers who revived nearly a dozen viruses, including one frozen under a lake more than 48,000 years ago. Now, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. There are some good uses of reviving a virus. Bruh. I know. Listen to me. Listen to me. This can be good in a way because if they revived it for studies and to make like a counter vaccine and to counter that, then that's good, right? For research, that's good. But you know for the fact that like there will be a bad apple somewhere right there will be someone that's sitting in dark rubbing their hands together and thinking of uh, this as an opening credits to a zombies apocalypse movie right you know for the fact reviving that's some of the dumbest thing ever but if it's inevitable where it's at one point like they're saying like the ice is going thin and it can actually get out there then surely it's better to go in deep revive it yourself and study it and come out with a solution right that's actually good but i mean reviving some of the dumbest thing ever but why can't why can't we promote peace why can't we live in peace another one another pandemic damn bro in the siberia region of russia the researchers who have revived a number of these zombie viruses as they're now being called have found the potential revival of viruses could infect animals or humans. Now, this is quite problematic. Moreover, in a report published in Science Alert, the same was reiterated by the lead researcher. Jean-Marie Olympic from the French National Center for Scientific Research said that these reanimating viruses are potentially a significant threat to public health Although further study needs to be done to assess the danger that these infectious agents could pose as they are eventually released into the atmosphere. Damn. Now this is a cause of concern as a virus is something that is neither living or dead. What? And it has the capability of being dormant for many years. But now with the permafrost melting away, these viruses pose a significant threat to public health. Man, like why, why do we have to be born in this era, right? Like, yeah. Like, it seems like that one thing does, is not even over, then the other thing starts, right? Like, bruh, bro, like, that's some... And clearly, it once again shows the perils of playing with nature. And clearly, more research is needed to evaluate the dangers associated with climate change. Now, to understand what this means, we are now being joined by Sarah Pitt from London. She is the principal lecturer in microbiology at the University of Brighton in England. Welcome to the broadcast, Sarah. Hello. Welcome, welcome. So Hola. this is, of course, a rather unique finding. We're talking about zombie viruses. Can you explain how such viruses can survive for millions of years? Frozen unique, unique, boys, unique. In glaciers and ice, and how exactly can they be brought back to life? Well, as you were saying there, because the permafrost is, is like a giant deep freezer, a very low temperature deep freezer. Viruses can survive under those conditions. We keep them in the laboratory at minus 80 degrees and, and they stay um, 
such that we can grow them again once we thaw them out. And viruses do need to live in organic material, such as- I, I understand that, but why ha why is everything, why every virus or, okay, in this case, why everything has to be buried in Russia, bro? Why, why? You crazy stuff, man, like, An damn. animal that died having still carrying that infection and if that happens you know the animal is preserved intact and so all any infectious agents that might be inside it so as everything starts to thaw out the because they've been perfectly preserved all the the cells inside the animal the tissues inside the animal start to um, revive and the viruses and inside them could also can also revive at the same time Sarah, also, can you tell yeah, us yeah, how yeah. these viruses could infect other organisms and spread rapidly, even before we can find a way to negate them? Well, the thing about it is that if they're viruses which are thousands of years old, they might be ones that we're not particularly familiar with. They might be closely related to something that we have around now, but, but it won't be something that we necessarily know. So if animals or even human beings get infected with those viruses, they we might not recognize the symptoms. And we also might not have the diagnostic tests ready to go quite soon enough. And then that's how things spread so rapidly. Damn. As you were mentioning there, we've just, we're well, we're still in the experience of COVID. It spread so rapidly because people didn't necessarily know the symptoms were different from flu or a cold in good time. And then it took us a little while to actually develop the diagnostic tests. We did a really good job with coronavirus because it is closely related to it, the SARS um, COV2 coronavirus is closely related to SARS-1 and other sorts of common cold viruses. So we had a bit of a head start from a diagnostic point of view. Whereas if they're sort of... Yo, but a zombie virus would be the mother of all viruses. I don't know about that one. Like, how does one... You need to find that scientist who revived it, though, right? You need to find that scientist. Thousands of years old and we don't know anything about them. It will take us a bit longer to get the diagnostic tests. And so the virus could really spread right. before we've really noticed that it's there. Right, absolutely, Sarah. But, you know, while this is being hailed as possibly a scientific discovery, it's a little worrying as well. There's a question of ethics. Okay, discovery or, Bruh. like, reviving? Because you say scientists revived it, like, you know what I'm saying? Also, that comes into play. Humans playing with nature can cause havoc. It's a recurring yeah. theme in most Hollywood films, especially when you talk about zombie viruses. Can you share how climate change poses dangers which have not yet been figured out? Well, in the same way that we don't really know what's going to happen as the climate across the world changes, where um, things becoming, un things thawing out, which might have infectious agents inside them, there's also a um, potential risk for things like anthrax, because the spores from, that's caused by a, a bacteria that produces these very, very resistant spores. And again, Yo, uh, if you have played Last of Us, that spore thing just completely gave me that PTSD. It just revived that memory. Like, crazy stuff, man. You need to, you don't want to panic, okay? First of all, don't panic, don't panic, and don't panic. They can be inside strong. animal skins and the bodies of humans who've been infected with it, and they potentially survive um, a, for a very long time and, and very, very well under sort of con um, good frozen conditions or be just being deeply buried in the earth, actually. And another thing that can happen is things like mosquitoes perhaps change their habits and their habitat and they might actually start as the, as with global warming as the temperature warms up everywhere and it also is more wet that the thing with um global warming is as we've all noticed yo we, we really did ruin this planet of ours man that's all the craziest stuff ever your climate changing i mean damn bro there's a lot more rain and that's very good for mosquitoes they could potentially i'm not saying they will but they could potentially spread around the world and take things like, I don't know, Zika virus or malaria to countries that didn't previously have them because they don't have the right species of mosquito. So right. that, that could all happen. It's all in theory, but it's something that we do need to be aware of. Absolutely, Sarah. Thank you so much for well, all this. Ladies and gentlemen, click on this video on the screen. Some of the craziest videos ever. Yep, it's all happening on our planet. Click on it, subscribe, and I'll see you right there.